Okay, so the next talk is Guillaume Lemaitre for talking about Imbalanced Learn, which is a library for machine learning when you have uh, imbalanced classes, like as the name suggests. Which? Yep, so I'm Guillaume Lemaitre. I'm working for the Center of Data Science in Paris-Saclay and also for the INRIA. So I'm here to present one of the toolbox that we start to develop like a year ago that's come from somebody else that started his own project. So what I will present first is maybe give some highlight on what the imbalance problem. So maybe not everybody is familiar with it. So the first image that I want that you look at is the bottom right image and is what you expect every time that you do machine learning. So you want to have the same number of, of samples in the different classes, you will apply the first linear classifier that you find. So here it is a linear SVC, and somehow it will work. But life is tough sometimes, and you have some classes where you will have less samples than others. And here we just play with this ratio. So the worst one is on the top left, where we have very few uh, samples of two classes, and we see that the SVM just classify mainly the yellow classes. Uh, so to solve this problem, you could use other sampling or other sampling methods, and that's the purpose of our toolbox. This is happening in several applications, so I just put a non-exhaustive list where we found that people were using those methods, so you can have in bioinformatics. I personally use it in medical imaging when I want, wanted to classify cancer, I mean cancer versus healthy in the case that uh, where you expect to have less uh, disease. Uh, you can have this in, in, in web services also when you want to predict that the service will go down, so really you hope that it will not happen, or in fraud detection also. So with your banker expect that you will not get uh, hack every morning. Um, so right now you, you could think, okay, what Cyclone can offer to deal with those problems? And there is a type of, of things that you have in scikit-learn, which is transformers. And those transformers can allow you to do several things. So one of them is to actually select column of your data sets, so select some features. Or it can also allow you to normalize or scale those features. However, there is nothing dealing with resampling the Y. And the only thing that is uh, available for your why is to actually encode the labels to have something between zero and the number of classes. So there is a limitation there uh, where you cannot reduce the number of samples in X and Y. Uh, there is something that you can trick. Uh, you can use sample weight and class weight to uh, actually maybe having such things. So we need the specific implementations uh, for dealing with like reducing the number of samples and implementing samplers. So at that point, we had several solutions. Either we were making a PR to, to Cyclion, saying we have a new brand uh, sampler, and it can take a couple of months to know what the exact API that you want. Or you can own your own package on your side and expect that people maybe will use it at one point. Or you can do a Cyclion contrib, which is you try to to follow what Cyclean have, so you have some requirement where you try to have a I mean, a sampler which follows the API of Cyclean, where you can have a user guide, uh, you follow the good practice with PEP8, unit testing, and uh, continuous integrations. And the good part of those contributions is that it's allowing you to have bleeding edge algorithm, so you don't need to, you can implement the last algorithm that was in, in the paper that you want absolutely to test. And in the same time, you don't have to bother cyclone people where they will tell you, yeah, you have to wait three years to have that. So, and if you do that, you can also try to experiment this, see which API is a good one, and benchmark and see the performance of those algorithms. So we went for these solutions, and we come up with this, uh, this tool, toolbox, and I will just pr present briefly what we have inside, the API and the different tools that we uh, want to extend, I mean, what can be used a part of scikit-learn. So the first thing that we have is that we have sampler, which are from the same class, and they have a common 
API, and the API is quite fit, like in uh, scikit-learn, but we can also sample. So whenever you want to resample a data set X, Y, you will call fit samples, and it will turn you uh, X and Y, which have a reduced dimension uh, and reduced features. So they all have uh, common uh, parameters, which is, which is ratio, which takes some uh, strings, which are usually enough for what the majority of people want. So you want just to rebalance automatically depending on the different methods, or you want only to tar resample the minority class, the majority class, or not the minority one. So this is offering you this. Otherwise, you can specify the, no the classes that you want to target and the number of samples that you want inside, or you can even pass uh, a functions where you want to have your own uh, way of selecting, of uh, specifying how many features you want, and you can get crazy with this one. So what actually our sampling is doing? So we have some method of oversampling. We can take the top picture where we have our unbalanced classes and we run a SVM and we have this problem that the top class is not well uh, classified. And we can, one of the methods is to say, okay, now I can increase the number of samples of this, of this class which is what is on the bottom right, and see if the SVM will classify better. So in this case, it's the SVM mod, SMOT, okay, but it's just for illustrations. So the oversampling allow you to create samples, and then you classify your will just adapt to this new distribution, and you will cope the, with the imbalance one, or the, or the imbalance problems. The second solution is to actually remove samples where you had too much. And there's two possibilities, one which is selecting the already original sample, or from the original sample, we can create a subset of them. So the top one is the generation, so for instance, we run a clustering to get a couple of samples of the majority classes, while the second one is just like, in this case, a random undersampler. There's some other techniques also, where we cannot specify the number of samples, is based on some exhaustive tool. And usually we call it cleaning under sampling because it's focusing on borders between classes and we'll just remove samples that are considered as noisy. And, and there is a couple of methods like that. You can also combine oversampling and undersampling. So you can use SMOT, for instance, which is an oversampling method on the left, which will create noisy points in the distributions and you can use a cleaning method afterwards just to clean the borders, okay? And so that's a summary of all what we are implementing right now in the, in the toolbox. So we have several methods for the oversampling, and uh, so small adassin, which are very known, and then we have near miss and some clean methods like condensed nearest neighbors and several variants, and edited nearest neighbors also, and some variants. And then we have things that combine oversampling and undersampling. To go with this, uh, what we thought is to include some state-of-the-art data sets, so usually some UCI data sets which have some degree of, of, of balancing, uh, so you can fetch and play with those toy data sets. Otherwise, we even gave uh, a utility which allow you to, from a, a balanced data set, to create your uh, unbalanced data set and make your life miserable afterwards. Uh, you can also, we re-implement your pipeline. So you can use, usually in cycle a pipeline where you can put several estimators. The problem is that if you try to put a sampler, that will not work. So we re-implementing this where we, uh, we manage uh, properly our, to deal with our sampler. And the idea is that when you call fit, you will apply, you will apply a sampling things. And when you call predicts, the sampler doesn't have any effect because you don't want to samples at prediction time, but only at fitting time. We also included some metric because uh, sometimes you have to, I mean, there is some new metric for imbalance uh, uh, cases. So if you use, for instance, the normal accuracy, you, you would get some score which is decreasing, but it doesn't mean anything. And that's why we implemented some additional specificity, geometry mean, and uh, index balance accuracy, which are usually used in the literatures, which 
And lately, in just before the last release, what we did is that we create one classifier which combine uh, an estimator from Scikit-learn with the random undersampling. So it's usually what the biking classifier are doing. But in this case, we have an extra step to sample before, and we call it balanced biking classifier. And as a, just an example, on the left here, it's what balanced classifier will give, and we see that the first class here is completely, uh, you don't have anything, is not considered during classifications, and what that, once that you just resample each uh, batch of data that go inside the ensemble, you will be able to correct these things. So don't do that at home, because it's only 39 samples, and we should not do machine learning on 39 samples. What else do we have inside the new release uh, compared to the 0.2? Now we are supporting multi-class for all the algorithms. We are still also managing uh, sparse matrices, and we try to make life easier to everyone with a new user guide, because we didn't have anything that was explaining what the method we're doing. So we just add the API, so now you can read the user guide. And we, I mean, it's just programming things, but we move from no test to PyTest. You can install it from pip and from conda from the GLMS channel, uh, ch channel. And then as the future works, we need to see how to handle categorical data, because it's not something that we check. I didn't mention here, but also we don't manage anything with regressions, so it's something that could be interesting. Uh, we still need some quantitative benchmarks just to know how when to apply uh, a method or not. Uh, we have a bottleneck with the nearest neighbors, because there is some method that are based on that. So we need Cyclone to have a very fast nearest neighbors. And uh, we are thinking about creating something specifically for deep learning and more specifically for Keras, where we could s make a upsampling inside the layers or something like that. So we, we are thinking about that. That's an idea of Olivier Grisel. So we are thinking maybe to do something in there. So for anybody that wants to discuss, we, I will be preparing the cyclical sprint uh, Friday. So if you want also to speak about that, I mean, I will be there. So thank you. Thank you very much. Um, the next speaker can start getting set up. In the meanwhile, any questions? Oh, I had. Uh, I was curious. Does do the algorithms implemented in this space work better for? I mean, obviously for visualization, it's easier to show on low dimensional problems. But do they actually work well when you go to higher dimensions, or do you start to see that like upsampling methods? Um, don't work nearly as well when you have very high dimensional data? Uh, it will depend. Seeing that the upsampling are just based on nearest neighbors, uh, right. it will depend on, I mean, you are inside a Euclidean space, so you will be limited by that. Uh, so I'm not sure that you will scale very well in very, very high dimensions. So. Makes sense. Okay, thank you again. <laughs>